be one of many conversations that we will be having with each other. And I'm quite excited about the prospect of speaking about topics and situations that we often think about as young adults and even as just adults in general. Um, this topic in particular, though, is very close to my heart because for me, taking a gap year was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. It was the year that I learned so much about myself and it actually shifted my perspective on my goals and my ambitions in my life. Um, and it's also the year that I made lifelong friends and I met amazing people from all over the world. So I hope that we'll all benefit from each other during the next hour or so that we have together. We have some amazing speakers tonight and I'd like to introduce you to our, to our first speaker, um, Brother Jamaluddin Khan. Jamaluddin Khan is an internationally acclaimed professional speaker, management consultant, and coach. And for the past 21 years, he has worked with youth, entrepreneurs, international corporations, as well as nonprofit organizations globally. He is a recognized authority at the nexus of psychology and business. Brother Jamaluddin is also an avid student of the Islamic sciences and he has studied various Islamic disciplines with teachers from South Africa and abroad. His key passion is identifying and teaching where Islam and science intersect. He has clients in 11 countries and is featured regularly in global media. Shukran so much for joining us, Brother Jamaluddin. Very excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, shukran so much, Fatma. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So, uh, inshallah, what I want to talk about uh, in my section is gap years as it applies to professionals. And, uh, you know, no matter what profession you're in, uh, I want to talk about that area. So, a gap year, much like the term peer pressure, is often... Uh, thought about to be for young people. So we think that young people, after matric, they should take a gap year, right? And it is useful for them, of course, but also a gap year is useful for anyone at any stage in their life. And let me explain to you why. So many people are in a job or in a career because of circumstance, right? So uh, for example, um, someone couldn't study. They didn't have enough money to study. So they found a job and built a career step-by-step step in that direction. Uh, other people might be influenced or directed by parents or family members to uh, become, for example, a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer, right? So, these things may happen at the start of someone's life and they might journey on in this direction, but they might not, uh, this might not be what is truly the right thing for them. So I want to describe two things which we often do not separate. The one is the science of success and the other one is the art of fulfillment, okay? So what is the science of success? Success is governed by laws. So if you follow a certain pattern and you are uh, adhering to the laws of that pattern, you will reach a certain outcome. So that's why, for example, if you have a father or a mother or both parents who are a doctor, it's very common that one or even more than one of their children become doctors as well. Why? Because the pathway has been set already, right? The pathway has uh, been journeyed already by their parents. So the kids follow suit and they reach much the same goal. So that is the science of success. The art of, fulfill ful the art of fulfillment, on the other hand, is something different. So fulfillment, is unique to all of us. And what I find beautiful, you might not find beautiful. What I find enjoyable, you might not find enjoyable, right? This is the art that is unique to all of us. Now, in my coaching work, what I have found is that many people have some degree of success, 
right? They have a job or a career and they've reached some level of success, but they're looking for fulfillment, right? Because uh, the pathway that they followed was incidental or circumstantial or directed by others. So why is a gap year important? To me, uh, and, and we use the, the, the term gap year, right? So we, 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 we use the, the, um, uh, the aspect of a 12 month period, but my emphasis is not just on a gap year or the 12 month period, but on any type of pause. So that's what a gap year is or any sort of break or uh, some people call it a sabbatical, right? This is a pause. It's not, necessarily, it's not necessarily a reset, but it could end up in a reset. What does that mean? It means that when you take this pause, you might find that you're actually on the wrong journey, that you actually want to go in a different direction. Now, the reason this pause, this gap year or this gap period is so important is because when we're busy, 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 we don't have enough space to reflect, right? So that space is important. Um, when we're busy studying or busy working or busy building a business, we're busy, we have lots of things to do. We have lots of responsibilities and we take some breaks, right? We have some enjoyment, but not there's not enough space for us to say to for us to reflect on who we are and where we're going so this aspect of who we are is extremely important so i differentiate who we are from number 1 what we do and number 2 from what we're good at right so we might be doing something, but that doesn't mean that's who we are. And we might even be good at something, but that also doesn't mean that that's who we are. So this pause and this reflection time, this gap year, this uh, sabbatical period really, really helps for us to understand that, to, to take a deeper look at ourselves. So I have found that uh, when people who are in a profession or people that have built a business over multiple years, they often say the same thing to me. They use the same word. They say, I'm at a crossroads, right? So a crossroads is a juncture in your life where you can either go one way or the other but you're confused on which way to go, right? It's not a path of like a promotion, right? So you might work in a job, there might be, you might be up for promotion, but that's going on the same path. It's just a higher level of that path, but that's not what the crossroads is. And many people find themselves at this crossroads because of how their life has panned out. Like I said, incidental, circumstantial, or uh, influenced by others. So when we take this pause, we can actually stop and reflect. And we can actually try to understand who we are and what we should be doing to have both the science of success and the art of fulfillment, right? Because that's what we want, right? So many of us know very, very successful people um, people who are globally known to be successful who take their own lives, right? And uh, much of that obviously has to do with mental illness, which is an, another big important topic on its own, but there's also a big element of unfulfillment, right? So uh, when we're young uh, at school, we, uh, in, in my schooling days, we had what is called a guidance counselor, right? Uh, it might be called something different today, I'm not sure, but this has always been seen as something important. 
but we've we've never actually uh, played enough focus and attention on it. Uh, the other panelists, uh, in, you know, that that are coming up in this webinar will speak about some of the other pressures that young people experience, societal pressures, et cetera. And this all keeps us back from pausing, right? So what should this pause or this gap year or this sabbatical look like? So uh, many people talk about traveling, right? Many people talk about things like learning a new language and those are good those are useful, but the primary aspect of your pause should be to really understand who you are. So for more than 10 years, I've asked a singular question to multiple people, whether in the individual capacity or in groups. The question is, what is your purpose, right? So when I ask this question, most people have a blank stare on their face because they've never been asked this question, right? A few people respond, but those who respond have a very similar answer. And they will say, I want to do good, right? But the problem is they have not defined what that good is, right? So, because they don't know themselves well enough. So, uh, a Muslim, if you ask them the question about what is your purpose, they will often say that they will quote the verse in the Quran uh, where Allah says that He has not created jinn and ma mankind except to worship Him, right? Which is absolutely correct. However, worship doesn't, worship is not confined to the prayer and fasting, etc. Right? Worship is everything we do that is pleasing to the creator. And I truly believe that all of us were born for a specific purpose. We were born to contribute in some unique way to the world. Right? And when we're on this treadmill, right? So we, we matriculate, immediately we go to university, immediately we get a job or an internship first and then a job when we build our careers or we start a business and we're busy, busy, busy. So we don't have this time to pause and to really understand who we are, right? So uh, for example, I have the highest respect for medical doctors, right? Like I really, really admire them, but I was not born to do that, right? And you know, some of you who follow my work online, you might know I had a 10 year struggle finding my purpose. <laughs> and during this 10 year period, one of the things that I grappled with quite a lot is that I, wasn't, I was not an Islamic scholar. I didn't study Islam and memorized the Quran from a young age and, and grew up to become a scholar, right? I grappled with this for a period of 10 years. But now I realized that I was not created for that, right? So we all were created for something unique, but the magic is to unlock what that is. And, uh, you know, if so, so, some people might be listening to this because uh, uh, my segment is on professionals, right? Uh, some of the other panels will, will talk to the younger people. But a professional, an adult listening to this might say, I don't have time to take a gap year, right? So my advice is that if you had to, how would you make that happen? That's the first question. The second question is, if this was easy, what would you do, right? Because often we complicate things. Often we uh, see something as one big thing, right? So one big thing means that it's too complicated, right? But uh, for example, when we learn to drive a car, it's first many things, right? like getting the seat, the car seat in the right position, 
that's one thing, right? Uh, this, uh, you know, turning the steering wheel is one thing. Uh, moving the gears is one thing. Uh, accelerating, uh, pushing the brake, those are all individual things until they become one thing, right? So uh, very often, and I'm sure many of you can relate to this, we drive from uh, point A to point B and we don't really remember how we got there because it all became one thing, right? And it became sort of, we, we do these things subconsciously. So in the same way, we have to reverse engineer this break, this sabbatical. And we should take this big thing and break it up into smaller chunks and see how we can do this. Actually, uh, you know, I, I met with a friend yesterday who's uh, on her way to Portugal, right? She's leaving South Africa, uh, going to live in Portugal. Uh, I met with her yesterday. And actually today I, I sent her a text and I said, I'm thinking of doing a two to four week sabbatical, uh, inshallah, uh, in uh, early January, in early 2021, because I need a pause, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, most of us have had a very tough year, a challenging year with COVID and, and everything else that has happened <laughs> in 2020. So um, I, I feel that I'm not uh, settled enough. Uh, I'm not focused enough. Uh, I started um, some very big projects at the beginning of 2020, which all fell to pieces because of COVID. And, and I, I really haven't thought through all of that yet. And it's, it's already, you know, end of October. So I need a pause, right? And in some ways that pause might result in some resets in my life. Uh, and in some ways not, but, but I'm, I'm on a treadmill. Right. So uh, when you uh, when you take this pause, you will find more clarity. Uh, I just saw you know, a post on LinkedIn about a week ago of a lady in uh, Austra either Australia or New Zealand. And she she had some pictures of herself in nature. And she was saying that she never had time to you know, be in nature, but someone advised her to do this and she started doing it. And she, she talked about how it has been affecting every other part of her life, right? So these are small pauses, right? Tiny sabbaticals, um, but we often don't make enough time for this. Um, so uh, inshallah, that's, that's, that's what I have to share. Uh, I hope that uh, at the Q&A later on, uh, inshallah, people can ask some questions and inshallah engage with me, uh, you know, if, if you want to know more uh, about this, inshallah. Shukran so much, Brother Jamal I really, um, I actually resonated so much with a lot of the things you said, especially when you spoke about the art of fulfillment. Um, when you say that we don't differentiate from what we are and what we are good at, I think, I don't know if you have been seeing these posts going around about internalized capitalism. And um, I've just been thinking about that a lot, how you constantly want to produce something, you constantly want to do something, but you don't actually know how to do it. Right. We don't actually know why you want to do it. And so I really resonated with this where you said you need a pause and you need a time of reflection and you need to think about how you want to do good and what you want your purpose in life to actually be. So um, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for mentioning that. And um, I also loved how you said that all of us want to do good and how you said that. Um, worship isn't the only way to do good or like you know dhikr and prayer and those things is not the only way to do good it really does come down to your intention and if your intention is to do things for the sake of Allah then that's worship whether it's teaching whether it's law whether it's you know anything so thank you so much for that it was really beautiful um our next speaker is sister Zahira Kaji 
Uh, she has worked in the field of autism and special needs education for the past nine years. Sahira also has an honors degree in psychology and is currently pursuing a master's degree in early childhood intervention. Uh, Zahira is a graduate of Medina Institute South Africa and continues to pursue her studies in the Islamic sciences on a part-time basis. She's particularly interested in the field of Islamic spirituality and its role in leading a purposeful and conscious life. In her free time, Zahira loves reading, spending time in nature and being in the company of children. Salam, Sister Zahira. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm very happy to be here to share some um, personal experiences with everyone. Um, and just firstly, thank you to the Medina Institute and also to my fellow panelists. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the Institute and all who are involved um, in, in goodness and in, 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 in providing benefits um, for students in our communities at large. Um, so today, inshallah, I would really like to speak from um, a very personal experience. Um, I, alhamdulillah, can resonate with a lot of what um, Brother Jamaluddin had said, specifically because I took a, a gap year during my, my, my career. Um, I am from Johannesburg, and about four years ago, I quit my job and moved to Cape Town. Um, to pursue a different path for a year. And alhamdulillah, up until today, which is four years later, I continue to see such amazing benefits um, from that specific year. And not just, um, you know, in terms of my professional pathway or in terms of my academic um, pathway, but just also on, on an individual level, in terms of my personal growth, in terms of, um, and most importantly, I would say, one of the gifts that that a gap year had given me was that of um, so becoming more socially and spiritually aware. Um, so being able to relate with different um, different types of people um, in a way that was more authentic, that was more genuine, and also um, just you know a deep opportunity or a great um, opportunity to go deep within myself um, to find out who I was. Um, and at that time, I was actually. Um, uh, doing special needs work, right, which many people um, would automatically say, there is your fulfillment, right? There is, um, there's your goodness that you're doing. But yet there was still something missing. Um, and um, alhamdulillah, during my gap year, I was able um, to focus enough to find, um, to find within myself um, understandings of who I was, what I wanted to give um, to myself and also to the broader community. Um, and one of the, the, the major challenges that I, my, my um, presentation will be focused on today, and just bear in mind that this is, is solely from personal experience, is that of external societal pressures. Um, and when I was preparing for, um, for this talk, I actually thought to myself, well, I experienced a few societal external pressures at that time, but I still today continue, even though I have a full-time job um, and even though I am um, enrolled in, in a master's program, I still continue to face societal pressures. I mean, so it's important for anyone who is making a decision to take a gap year and who are, um, or who, who are experiencing, you know, external societal pressures, pressures from family, pressures from the community to understand and to internalize that this is going to be a continuing thing, right? It doesn't end, it never ends. Um, the world is such that, and society is such that, and even human beings are such that, we are, we are continuously changing, we're continuously growing. Um, and thus there will always be different external um, experiences, external circumstances, external opinions, um, external pressures that are influencing the decisions and the paths um, that we take going forward. Um, so more specifically, if I just can reflect on three um, personal, um, external, societal pressures that I had experienced um, when I was taking a gap year, it's that of productivity, conformity, and also relationships. And I think relationships is possibly a big one for many individuals, um, but we'll start with productivity and um, very uh, to take it forward from what Sidi um, Jamaluddin was saying earlier, that there is this um, capitalist view that we have to be continuously producing beings, right? 
we always have to be making a contribution. We always have to be busy doing something. Um, and so you'll find that a lot of the time when you decide to make, uh, decide to say, okay, you know what, I want to take a gap year, many people will ask, well, how are you going to earn money? How are you going to contribute to society? How are you going to be producing, right? Um, so that is one external pressure that you may face as you um, embark on a journey of taking a gap year. And then a more, uh, over and above that is that of conformity. Um, and this particularly for students um, that we always, when, when we're deciding on what to do in our own lives, we, uh, it is, I think it's human nature as well to so take into account, you know, what people around us are doing, what are our family members doing, what are our siblings doing, what are our friends doing, right? And um, if I'm not doing this, what is that going to say about me and my path? What are other people going to say about me and my path? Um, and on a very personal level, um, I think it, it, it's important to just reflect on some of um, the experiences that I went through is that I was a single female um, at the age of 26 in, um, embark in my career, um, having completed my degree. And at that point, many people would have expected me to say, hey, you know what, I'm getting married follow the normal trajectory of life, getting married, have kids. And yet here you are deciding, well, no, I don't actually want to do that right now, right? I really want to go um, away for a year or six months and take time, some time for myself. Um, and so that is definitely, when it, when it comes to conformity um, uh, in terms of what other people are doing, is definitely a pressure or um, a barrier that we may place upon ourselves or that other people may place upon us when we are deciding to take a gap year. Um, and then the last pressure, um, societal pressure, is that of relationships. Um, and I think, again, particularly for students, th this will be, um, can sometimes be very challenging, especially when it comes to um, people who are really close to us, who may have different ideas about where they see our lives going. Um, particularly for parents, particularly for close friends, um, that it may be, um, um, it, it definitely um, can be um, a great barrier in you pursuing or you taking um, that decision to, um, take a, to take a gap year. So just to reflect on overview again, so productivity, conformity, and relationships, right? Um, and so I just wanted to put those out there um, to for students and for prof professionals alike to understand and to know that these are not um, experiences that you are experiencing alone right, that we all experience this at different times of our lives. Um, and it is important rather than just to reflect on these and leave it at that or um, leave them as barriers, rather what we need to rethink these societal pressures and see what are some ways or tools that we can put into place to effectively deal with these societal pressures. Um, and again, just talking from, from personal experience, um, I will share three tools um, that perhaps inshallah will, will, will help um, guide others to make a decision if they are wanting to take a gap year. And the first is that of writing things down. Um, I love the way that um, Sidi Jamaluddin had said that we make things into this big one thing, right? And so writing things down, especially when it comes to external pressures, helps to um, sort of compartmentalize the different things that we may, we may be experiencing. And when we write things down, and we are better able to see the positives and the negatives um, of that particular issue and then make a decision going forward in a more stronger um, and in a more um, in a more better way. Right. Um, and particularly, I, I, I had written um, down a note saying take gap moments. Right. So in your day, every day if you are contemplating whether you want to take a gap year or not, take gap moments while you're still com contemplating and write down some of the, the positives and the negatives that can come through or come from um, the decision that you are going to make. Okay. Um, and then I also, um, I think this is a big one, particularly when it comes to relationships um, and people that are close to us when they have different views um, in terms of the way our life should move forward, is that of engaging and interacting with others in a respectful way um, and, and sharing your ideas and your reasonings about why you want to take a gap year. Um, oftentimes, um, when, we, when, when we are placed with, with barriers in front of us, 
we just accept it and be like, okay, no, my parents said no, so I'm not going to go forward, go forward with it anymore. Or my friends are doing this, so no, it's okay, let's just leave it, right? Um, but rather, if we take the time to actively engage with those around us, um, we may actually see that there are really so many similarities between what I want for myself and what other people want for me. Um, and that will help us to bridge the gap and give us again that empowerment um, to make decisions that are truly beneficial for ourselves. Um, and then I put on a last, um, a last tool that we can use in order to overcome these some of these societal pressures. And this is um, that of mentorship and taking the time to, to seek guidance right um oftentimes we think that we have to do this alone um but really so many other people have gone through this journey so many people have um really so much of guidance and so much of goodness to offer in terms of their own experience and in terms of expertise and professional um um, understandings and thoughts around taking a gap year. Um, so yeah, don't be shy to, to, to seek guidance, seek mentorship um, from, from, from others who have went through the experience. Um, and then I think a last, um, a last topic that I would like to discuss under, the, under external societal pressures is that of the distinction be, between being true to oneself um, and then making decisions based on what others think. Right. Um, and here I don't I don't mean that we should completely, you know, take out um, the viewpoints or the the guidance that others offer. Right. Because that is something that we all need, especially when it comes to parents, when it comes to teachers, when it comes to friends, when it comes to perhaps religious leaders in our community, um, they may have invaluable advice. Um, to give to us, right? And so we should always, yes, be taking into account what, um, what they are saying to us in terms of our, our future going forward, right? But it is important not to get distracted and not to absorb yourself into the opinions of others such that, um, you know, your whole life or all the decisions that you're making are based on what others think. And this is particularly important where we're living in the age of social media, right? where there's so many different influences. Um, you know, one day you want to be a doctor, the next day you want to be a teacher, the next day you want to be this. Someone's traveling to America, someone's traveling to Morocco. There's so many different viewpoints, so many different thought processes um, that are happening, so many different um, types and, and, and um, pathways that you can take. So it's very important that as we are deciding to um, to take a gap year, that we reflect and contemplate on really what is it, what is it that is important for myself, right? And how then um, um, can I use that process to make a decision that will be beneficial for me, right? And it also uh, gives you an opportunity um, to empower yourself and to trust yourself that you know what, I am capable of making this decision. And yes, at the same time, um, I, I, take into the account, uh, I take into account the opinions, the understandings of those that love me, that those are in my close circle, um, but I am true to, to myself. Um, and I leave you um, with, with a quote that has inspired me um, throughout my journey um, of making different decisions, choosing different pathways. Um, and it is a poem by Mary Oliver. Um, we, uh, her poem is called the, the Journey, and I've just chosen a short snippet just to remind anyone who's making a, this difficult decision um, that um, the power of your own voice um, can really help you to make a decision that will be beneficial for yourself and beneficial for those around you. Okay, so she says, but little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you slowly recognize as your own. Okay, shukran. Shukran so much, Sister Zahira. That was such a beautiful talk, especially when you spoke about societal pressures and how they are constantly changing and also how we are not alone in those struggles. Because I feel like as young adults, and I'm sure people feel like this throughout most, like throughout their lives, we sometimes do just end up feeling like we are alone in what's going on. Um, and it's really nice to know that we're not alone. And so seeking maybe like taking that pause 
and accepting that mentorship, like you said, could really mm-hmm. just alleviate some of the pressures that we actually put on ourselves, especially when it is societal, but also we do have a lot of internal pressures. Um, I loved that you said we should be true to ourselves, but also think about what other people have to say, like in terms of guidance, and also they're not losing yourself in what they say. So being, you know, like accepting the guidance, but also trusting yourself. I think that's very important. Um, and so our next speaker is uh, Widad Sirkot. Widad holds a master's degree in education in which she investigated students' experiences in a B.Ed. program in relation to promoting social cohesion. Part of, the fi- part of these findings indicate that for individuals to truly develop themselves, they need exposure to different cultural environments so that their purpose in life is clearer. Widad has worked as a school teacher, academic research assistant, and enjoys assisting individuals with career choices. Widad currently works in the area of course and curriculum design at the University of Cape Town. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, um, Lady um, and Jane. It's such a pleasure to be here and to be part of this program that Medina Institute is, um, is doing um, all the works. Um, so I'm going to be speaking about uh, just three values or three essential needs that students um, should you know, try to develop before coming to university. Um, because university can be a very um, dangerous place, not dangerous in a bad way, but it's very new, but it can be very um, overwhelming. Um, So I'm going to start off by saying that um, after 12 years of schooling, it's just very natural for a student, a young student, a young person to want to take a break, just to recharge themselves, um, to do something different, nothing academic, However, society or our systems have made this seem, you know, very odd, very unnecessary, a waste of time, a waste of money. But taking time off, taking a planned gap year, has so much potential, potential to give meaning to what we do as professionals, give meaning to how we live our lives in general. So in planning a a gap year, um, we need to ensure that, you know, there are certain career fields or certain jobs that you want to explore, you have an idea of some of the, the skills that you want to, uh, to try, to learn how to do, um, some environments that you want to you know, explore that you haven't been able to do, um, some projects that you want to volunteer on, because this is very important in, um, in developing a, a mature attitude, that maturity that is needed when you come to university. Uh, maturity in the sense, um, being able to make conscious and correct decisions, because when you come out of school, um, you don't necessarily have that maturity yet. You're very much driven by what your friends or your peers are, are doing and saying and thinking. And um, this can sometimes be to the detriment of, 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 you know, of yourself because you haven't given yourself enough time to, to find out what you like, what your interests are, who you are, what you want to do, how you want to serve humanity. So just thinking about my research, um, there was one of um, the student teachers that I interviewed and um, he indicated that in his matric year, he was so puzzled with regards to what to study. He didn't have a clue, but he listened to what his friends were saying. They were saying, oh, I want to study mechanical engineering. I want to do chemical engineering. I want to do this and that. And then he said, okay, maybe you should also do engineering. And he enrolled, he studied for four years, he graduated and he started working. And after working for two years, he he sat down and he said, like, this isn't what I like doing. This is not what I, what I enjoy doing. I want to do something else. And he soon discovered and he realized that he wants to work with people and not tools. And that's when he said, okay, fine, I'm going to become a teacher. And he went on to become, you know, he, he studied and that's how I kind of met him. So the point is that it's, it's very, very important for young adults um, to take time to find themselves Um, to find out what they like doing, what are their interests, what do they want to do, um, and to realize their purpose, and then make plans, you know, how to achieve this, what to study, what to do next. And I think that a planned gap year can definitely assist with us. Um, Instead of hopping from course to course, 
um, or spending years of studying and then only to realize that you don't want to do that. I know of students, for instance, that have traveled from abroad. Um, they paid up their full year of, of, of you know, tuition, bought a textbook, paid accommodation. And then three months down the line, they're like, um, I don't want to do this course, you know, and that's a complete waste of money then. So again, taking a plan gap year, um, your purpose just becomes clear or clearer. It becomes real and you naturally develop a drive, um, you know, for like, I want to do this. I want to reach it. I want to do it. And it also changes the way that you make decisions because now your decisions are more conscious, um, more goal orientated, more deliberate, more mature. And this matured attitude is also very good. Like when you come to university, it just boosts your academic performance because now you have a clear idea of, you know, what you need to do to qualify or, you know, how to do it and where you want to be. Um, many higher education institutions have reported that students who take a planned gap year tend to have a more mature attitude um, to independent study and education in, in general. So a maturity can definitely be, you know, um, developed through a planned gap year. And a second value or need would be self-discipline. Self-discipline also linked to maturity to some extent. Um, Self-discipline here defined more as being focused, being motivated, also goal-driven and put simply not being lazy. So we know when you come to university, there's so much freedom uh, you know, that you can explore. Like here you can say, I don't want to go to class. Um, I want to go to this you know, society or this, I want to do that. I want to sit in the cafeteria, play cards, talk nonsense, play jokes, whatever. Um, there's just plenty full of, of, of events and activities to do that can be very detrimental um, to the student who is not self-disciplined, who has not developed you know, the skills of being self-disciplined. And um, if you take a plan gap year, you can definitely learn about your own weaknesses and how better to control them. And you also become aware of yourself, like you know, Zahira and Jamaluddin have pointed out, and you're aware of your goals. So therefore, you're able to exercise self-discipline um, easier. So just an example again from, from my research. One of my research participants lived um, just outside of Cape Town, two hours outside of Cape Town in terms of traveling. And she happened to be married and she had three kids. And uh, she wanted to attend a specific university, a specific English university in Cape Town, um, because she really wanted to be a teacher. And a teacher of, um, she had this, this idea that she wanted to be a certain teacher and going to a certain university would make her that, you know, certain teacher that she wanted to be. Uh, but she had to wake up 3 a.m. for four years of her life to cook and clean, then get ready and travel to university. And her, her colleagues or her peers and, and even the lecturers told her, Are you, uh, um, why don't you study at Stellenbosch? Or, you know what, I'm not going to mention names, but why don't you study elsewhere? Why do you want to come to Cape Town? Two hours, you know, you're driving to Cape Town, two hours back it doesn't make sense. But this didn't, you know, make her think otherwise. She had a set goals and a set plans and she had self-discipline. So this is just an example of, you know, self-discipline, which is important when you come to university because you can easily be derailed, you know. Um, so again, when taking a plan gap year, it's very important to, to therefore take time um, to reflect on your purpose and to establish goals and have an action plan or a clear plan on how you're going to achieve your goals. Because it's no use saying, okay, I want to do this. I know I need to become a teacher or, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, but how are you going to achieve this? So a, a plan gap year, you also have time to think about that and to research a bit more about different universities, what they offer, you know, who the lecturers are, what you can specialize in and so forth. Um, and then amongst these temptations, you know, um, these freedoms that the universities have, there's also this constant exposure to Western and different philosophies, ways of being, ways of doing, ways of thinking that could be very, very shocking um, or even appealing uh, to the young adult that does not know who or what they want to be. Um, and at university, we all know that there's a wide range of, of diverse people. 
from different racial populations, cultures, um, speak different languages, have been raised differently. Um, and, and sometimes if, if they're a young adult, if they don't know who they are, um, they can easily assimilate or adopt to, to, you know, to take me on those identities or at times even develop hatred for certain groupings or hatred even for their own, you know, um, homes or families or, you know, um, that have, or communities that they've been raised in. So the third need or value that is important is, is that of awareness, being aware of, of yourself firstly, and being also aware of other people's ideas and lifestyles, not to criticize or to assimilate or to adopt to, but to have open, meaningful and respectful conversations so that you can understand others and you can understand yourself. So the value of, of self-awareness can be developed through taking a, a planned uh, gap year, because if you volunteer for, um, you know, to be part of different projects or you attend lectures and workshops and you meet different people, yeah, you can easily, like, you know, start up a, a conversation or get used or, or, you know, discuss further, you know, why do you think this way? And um, it can somehow prepare you for when you do come to universities when, you know, for certain there is going to be a wide range of different people. So, um, being mature, having self-discipline, being aware are, are just some of the essential skills when you come to university and if taking a plan gap year can definitely help you develop, you know, those, um, those skills. I know that everybody is, um, you know, you, you want to know your purpose, you want to do good, as Sidi Jamaluddin has alluded to or has said. And sometimes we just need time, quiet time, and, and you know, time away from the academics and the busyness of life to reflect on that and to develop skills and values that prepares us to, to make known our, our purpose and, and our goal settings and what to do next. Uh, that's all. Shukran. Shukran so much, Sister We Dad. I just, um, I just want to tell a story for like one minute. So I went to Medina Institute. I took a gap year and I decided to go to Medina Institute. And what you said about how a planned gap year can assist with your goals becoming clearer, your purpose becoming clearer, and it helps you develop that drive to actually, you know, learn about yourself. Honestly, that's exactly what taking a gap year did for me. Um, it definitely made me more goal orientated. It definitely made me more deliberate in the decisions that I made. And um, I just appreciate the fact that you could bring that to us today. And actually, you know, with the studies that you've done, it actually proves that. I think it's amazing um, because there are quite a few people who do have a little bit of a negative outlook on um, gap years. But when you said that there's actually research that shows that students mm -hmm. who have taken gap years are more mature in the way that they approach university and the way they approach independent learning. Amazing. I love that. And it makes sense. It does make sense. If you just yeah. take some time to actually learn about yourself, it makes sense that you would have more knowledge on how to traverse like all of those different things in your life. Um, so thank you so much. Our next speaker is Brother Ilyas Amin. Ilyas is a fourth year medical student at UCT, having recently completed his honors degree in neuroscience and physiology. Ilyas is also the founder of Teutonic, an online math tuition system, and he uses this platform to regularly engage with matriculants on their career options. He is also a part-time student at Medina Institute and is pursuing a master's in neuroscience. He, has re he was recently elected as the chair of UCT MSA, and in his spare time, he enjoys reading, soccer, and long-distance running. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to address all of you on this really uh, exciting uh, topic. Alhamdulillah, I've, I've really enjoyed listening to the first uh, three speakers. And uh, I think that well, one of the key concepts that has been established um, for those first three talks was just how beneficial the gap year is to those who have the ability to take uh, that path. 
but uh, I think what I'm going to be reflecting on um, is how, how does one approach the situation when you don't even have the ability to take a gap year? Because there are many people, I'm sure there are many people who are listening to this talk uh, right now, and they themselves might be thinking, you know, this sounds really great, but I myself know for a fact that I, I just don't have the space to take a pause in my life, or I don't have the means to take an extended break to, to think about all these important things, what happens to me. Maybe you're, you might be the sole breadwinner in your in your family, or you might be a university student in the middle of your degree. Um, so therefore, we do have to think about this dimension in addition to the, um, the established concepts that were presented very nicely by the first uh, three speakers. But firstly, I think what's important to establish again, you know, as um, Brother Jamaluddin mentioned, that there's this big problem in society this internalized capitalism, as Fatima mentioned, of, of climbing the ladder and having to feel that you have to, um, that achievement comes from doing what society actually expects of you. And often you find that you, you're driven by this internalized capitalism to just climb different ladders. So that's the analogy that I like to use, climbing ladders. And um, that will make you successful. So success, you know, is reserved for the one who is prepared to climb all the ladders. But greatness is reserved for the one who is able to understand the nuances of the ladder. Greatness is reserved for the one who is able to understand what is this ladder taking me towards? Who designed the ladder? Who is the ladder serving? This is what greatness is, is reserved for. And it really comes down to how one defines what is greatness and what gives us greatness. And uh, again, you know, we look at the verse, the man and the jinn was not created except for ibadah, except for knowing the creator. And that must always be the ultimate standard that we use to judge um, our lives. We must always ask ourselves, you know, no matter what we do, is this thing, bringing me closer or bringing, away, bringing me away from, from my creator. So whatever you know, job that you engage in, that must always, always be the question. Um, so in my, you know, applying this concept to my life, I think that we have to realize that for those people that maybe don't have the ability to, to take uh, a gap year, what do they do? Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, Alladina Yadkuruna Allah Kiyaman, Waku Udan wa Allah Junubim wa Tafakuruna fi Khalki Samawati wal Arut, those who remember Allah standing, sitting and on their sides and reflect on the way in which the heavens and the earth was created. So this concept of being able to use every moment in your life as a tool for reflection. It's possible that when you engage in everyday activities that you you can engage in this in the sense of of reflection so that no matter what you're doing you're always able to 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 think about the big picture in life and i think this can be a a remedy for those who don't have the option to necessarily take that gap year but to use to see every moment in their life as an opportunity for reflection because you know we agree that whilst one of the benefits of uh, taking the gap year is being able to reflect on your life, that reflection should not stop after the gap year is finished. Reflection is a lifelong process. So therefore, this concept of being able to use every moment to engage in reflection should be something that we all aspire to. And this, you know, when applying this concept to my own life, um, studying medicine uh, at UCT, uh, I was very privileged to learn about the anatomy, the physiology, the chemical pathology, the microbiology. Um, but in many ways, it was information. It was teaching me about the human body. It wasn't teaching me and directing me to the creator of the human body. So that's why, you know, I said at the beginning of my speech that 
once you orientate yourself to the big picture, to the grand scheme of, of life, uh, you're able to appreciate the gifts that, that Allah gives to you. So when you see uh, the human body, when you see the cell, the DNA, the genes, you automatically think about the creator of, of that thing. And this is where the reflection comes. So it's not in the sense that you're taking a pause from life, but you may be reaching that stage where you're constantly reflecting the things that you're engaging with on the dunya to a higher power. And my sheikh at Medina used to say to me that, you know, in life, you're so busy. You're so busy engaging with the various activities of, of daily living. But the best of human beings are those that they, their hands and their tongue and their eyes and their ears engage with the dunya, but their hearts are always beating to the rhythm of la ilaha illallah. And that is the state that we need to aspire to, that um, even though our lives may be so busy, that we have this ability to always attach the things that we're seeing and feeling and hearing on this life to some, to some higher purpose. The other thing that I think is important to, to mention is that you know, if you look at medicine, for example, there's an incredible hierarchy. The medical student pushes himself to become an intern. The intern pushes himself to become the community service officer. The officer pushes himself to become a registrar. The registrar becomes a junior consultant. The junior consultant becomes the senior consultant. The senior consultant becomes the chief consultant. The chief consultant becomes the principal consultant. And then maybe the principal consultant becomes the head of department and the head of department becomes the dean. There's a big hierarchy in the discipline. Uh, so again, we have to realize that what is this journey taking me towards? Why am I going, undergoing this journey? Is it because I want to have status? Is it because I want others to think of me as such a high person? Or is it because I want to use this gift or this knowledge that I've obtained to reflect that onto the goodness of other people? But you can only do that if you've orientated yourself to the, to the main purpose of life, which is to become closer to your creator. And I firmly believe that even if you are not necessarily in that space to take a formal gap year, if you're able to associate everything in your busy life with your creator, that is probably the best alternative. And I think, you know, when you're trying to embrace this, this new path, you have to always think about what is the bigger picture here. Hamza Yusuf uh, draws the example of the painting where he mentions that, you know, when we're looking at a painting, some of us might ask the question, you know, who made the painting? How big is the painting? What is the dimensions? What are the colors used? Is it pastel? Is it something else? But the most important question that you have to ask yourself is, what does the painting mean? And the same thing should be for the human being. You can understand the anatomy, the physiology, all these things, the composition. But the most important question is, why am I here? What's the meaning of the human being? So no matter what field you go into, that must always be in the forefront of your mind. Is, I'm not saying that, that we can't engage in the various secular fields. What I'm saying is that you should use that position and reflect it back to your ultimate purpose. And I firmly believe that if we do this, we will become more conscious human beings. We will become more fulfilled human beings. And uh, I would like to thank you for listening to me. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran so much, Brother Ilyas. Um... You said so many amazing things, especially about how if you are not able to take a full gap year, how you can still orientate yourself to serve a higher purpose by just 
reflecting on things in your daily life. So using that concept of what you would learn in a gap year and actually just applying it to small things in your daily life. I think that was wonderful. Um, and then you said, I loved how you just said, why am I here? That's such a complex question, but it's also just something that we think about every day. I mean, okay, I think about it every day. I don't know if everyone thinks about it every day, but I do. Um, and it is like um, Brother Jamaluddin said right at the beginning, it's because we want to do good and we want to know God and we want to serve God. And so as all of the speakers have said tonight, they've all given us different ways in which we can actually learn about God and serve God, you know, in any way that also fulfills us. So shukran so much to all of you. Um, so now I'm going to, um, if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask, I see there is one question that's been asked. Um, I think this is for Brother Jamaluddin. How, actually it could be for anyone. How do we still get that pause or the sabbatical whilst still being financially stable? Okay, inshallah, I, I'll give it a go, inshallah, uh, the other panelists uh, can respond as well. So before I answer this, uh, let me just set a little foundation of what I'm going to say as a coach, right? So uh, Muhammad Ali, we all know, the, the very famous boxer, uh, he was exercising and a journalist asked him uh, how many sit-ups he does. And he says he starts counting when it hurts, right? So, so he was accustomed to pushing himself. And as a coach, that's what I do, right? I help people uh, to reach their potential, but with empathy, sometimes you need to push a little bit. So, so this answer is a bit of a push, <laughs> okay? So um, uh, many people will struggle with um, financial stability or their, uh, you know, other aspects of their life when deciding to do something like taking a gap year, right? And my advice is we really dig deep and be self-critical and ask, is what I'm concerned about a reason or an excuse, right? Because often we don't know the difference. So... In our lives, many of us have said multiple times, sorry, I was late, or, or sorry, I'm late, I was stuck in traffic, <laughs> right? Many of us have said that. So let's say we've said it 100 times in our life. Probably 95% was an excuse and not a reason, right? And that 5% was uh, an actual reason. We were actually stuck in traffic. But most of the time, we left home too late. We weren't prepared enough, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to take a gap year, if you find meaning in what myself and other panelists have said, but you have all these hurdles, ask yourself, is this a reason or an excuse, right? Because it's easier not to take the gap year. <laughs> it's easier just to do what you've always done, right? Maintaining the status quo is always easier. Right? So differentiate between reasons and excuses. And then also do something called fear setting. Fear setting is defining what you fear. What's the worst that could happen? And is it reversible if that fear does actually happen? And, um, you know, uh, in, in, this is just a Q&A section, so I can't go into depth in this, but you will find that most things that we fear either will not come to pass and those who do come to pass or those that do come to pass are reversible and very fixable, right? So I'm saying this with empathy and understanding that life situations are difficult. It's not that easy for everyone just to stop what they're doing and, and you know, take a pause or go and study or take a little break but we really have to dig in to what we can do if we had no other choice. Like I said earlier, what if I was forced to do this? Or what if this looks, uh, how would this look if it was easy, right? And 
we can say things. We can tell people, oh, I can't take a gap year because of X, Y, and Z. But only we truly know what we can and cannot do, right? So this is not something that uh, we, uh, we can rely on other people. We can seek advice, yes. Uh, like Zahira has said, uh, talked about seeking mentorship. We should do that, but the buck will stop with us. And uh, so inshallah, that's, that's uh, uh, my take on that. Inshallah, maybe the other panelists have some answers as well. Uh, would any of the panelists like to add to that? Thank you, Brother Jamaluddin. That was quite comprehensive. Okay, we do have one more question. So um, one of the questions I think that I would like to ask maybe all of the panelists, um, Sister Bidad, if you could answer this one first, what does a gap year actually mean to you? What would it look like to you? Shukran, uh, Sister Matima. So for me, a gap year means taking time to, to find oneself, um, to reflect, to meet new people. And um, a gap year doesn't have to be only a year long, like 12 months, but it could also be, you know, four months, um, two years, or something that's ongoing, like Sahira, you know, alluded to taking gap moments, um, because we always need that time to reflect upon. And that is the, the key, you know, in, in taking a gap, the gap from your studies, the gap from your profession, just a gap to reconnect to, to rethink your purpose, um, to reset your goals, to recharge, you know, away from the busyness of life. So that to me would, would define it a, a gap year. Shukran so much. And Sister Zaira, what is a what is a gap year to you? Um, okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So I um, I'm gonna take a different take on this, perhaps just to help those that are um, contemplating currently taking a gap year um, and maybe just reflect on what my gap year looked like. Um, so um, I had moved from Johannesburg. I quit my job um, as a special needs um, ABA therapist. Um, I quit my job in Johannesburg, moved to Cape Town, um, lived with a family in Bulkup. I coming from an Indian family um, in Johannesburg um, and attended the one year Usuluddin course at the Medina Institute. Um, and for me, subhanAllah, that was just really life changing um, in terms of um, just so we can perhaps solidify um, what was mentioned before in terms of finding purpose, um, in terms of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, and also giving yourself an opportunity um, to get to know people um, um, of different cultures, different understandings, um, and also to give back to the community. Um, and so if I were to choose again, if I could take a gap year, um, then again, I would um, do something that um, is focused on developing my understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my understanding of God um, and inshallah increasing our knowledge as as, as Muslims. Um, you know, I think sometimes we, we, we take for granted the depth um, of beauty um, and the depth of benefit that Islam can give to us. Um, and so for, uh, as a, um, uh, a guiding light for anyone who is choosing um, to take a gap year, that I would definitely recommend to take some time to really just get to know what Islam means to you and um, some of the, just the core foundational basic understandings of the religion as a whole. Shukran so much. Brother Ilyas, what does a gap year mean for you? Yeah, I was just going to add on to uh, Sister Zahira. You know, everything is a lot sweeter when you can see the Islamic nature in whatever you do. And when you're able to relate your experiences to something higher, you know, something that is not material, something that is metaphysical. So the gap year is... Um, it's not something that I, I've actually experienced. I, I'm, I haven't actually taken a gap year yet in my life. Um, but uh, to me, it's just that space for somebody to, to engage in a, it's not a passive process. That's the first thing I would like to say. The gap year shouldn't be passive. It should be active. 
and that you have um, some sort of direction as to what you would like to uh, achieve. There must be goals um, that you set uh, for yourself. Uh, but like I said, you know, the ref uh, one of the great benefits of the gap year is that you're able to reflect about the bigger things in life. Uh, but that reflection must not stay in the gap year. It, it's a constant process for your entire life. Shukran so much, Brother Ilyas and Brother Jamaluddin. What is a gap year to you? What does it look like to you? Okay, uh, my advice uh, is twofold. Firstly, uh, to change your environment as much as possible, right? Because uh, if you take a gap year and you just stay in the same environment that you were before, it'll be very difficult for you to find this internal growth that you need. Right. So uh, if it's if you can uh, leave your normal environment for the entire period, that would be better. But even for parts of the day, uh, every day, that will help as well. So your environment is important. The second thing is um, to find meaning and we find meaning by seeking knowledge. Right. So I've had a lot of people who are professionals who are very successful but they've uh, neglected their Islamic knowledge, for example, and they feel disconnected from their creator, right? So they're uh, practicing Muslims, but they're disconnected. And uh, this increase in knowledge and looking and, and seeking the meaning in things will really help because that will lead you to understand yourself better. Because like I said earlier, we were all born for something, right? Uh, Sheikh Riyad Walsh from Cape Town, I was in a class uh, with him many years ago and he said something that stuck with me. He said that Allah does not do anything in jest, right? Meaning that every single thing has a purpose. Every single thing has meaning. Right, uh, Brother Ilya spoke about meaning as well. This this ma'na, right? So the Prophet والسلام, would name his possessions like his comb because things have meaning, right? So uh, your environment and um, seeking meaning and increasing knowledge; those are the two things, inshallah. Shukran so much. I'd just like to say once again, thank you to all our panelists. This was an amazing and insightful discussion. I hope that um, the people that have joined us have benefited from it. I know I've benefited from it. And just listening to everybody's different perspectives, I think it puts, it puts a gap here in a different light. Hopefully it puts a gap here in a different light. Um, also, I would just like to add that if anyone is interested in keeping up with Medina Institute and the events that we have, then please feel free to visit um, www.medinainstitute.ac.za. Um, Medina Institute does offer amazing courses and it is a once in a lifetime experience. Really, it is. It never leaves you. Medina never leaves you. The teachers never leave you. The learners never leave you. Alhamdulillah, it was the best decision I've ever made. So um, just once again, shukran, jazakallah to everyone. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening. Um, I look forward to speaking to all of you soon again, inshallah. So, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Shukran to, to everyone. It was a real honor for me to be uh, on this panel with all of you. Jazakallah khair.